Hey, Bulls and Bears, JJ. You watching Bull, Bull and Bear Bust. It is pre-market. It is Monday, February 24th. Wanted to make a quick video. We are going into a real test for this economy and for the individuals that are propping this economy up with the stock market right now. Right now, Dow Jones futures are down over 2%. That's a swing of over 300 points. S&P down 1%. And it's bouncing around a lot of volatility uh, between 1% and 2.5% actually on the S&P. Uh, the NASDAQ now to around 2%. Now, why am I focusing on this? Well, right now, this is going to be the biggest test for the economy because of the fear that is spreading globally. Right? We have other cities even outside of China that are shutting down right now. Um, a lot of quarantines. And even if it's not actually as bad as it they're saying it is, just the fear of it getting worse can shut down economies. China right now came to a screeching halt. And this could happen. It could spread. And I'm not saying it's going to, but the fear, it's a very real possibility. And I think we should prepare for it and at least be aware of the possibilities that are out there. Now, before we get into the information today, let's just talk about why do we talk about the stock market and the plunge protection team and they're propping the market up. You know, some people say big deal. I don't have that many investments in stocks or you may not have any investments in stocks. But here's what it is. The stock market is a major, major component of confidence. And when the U.S. consumer loses confidence, then look out below because we are a consumer based nation. It could get very ugly very quick if this spread, if this uh, fear spreads over to the United States. All right. So also. Just the fact that people have this paper wealth, their 401ks, their retirement accounts, uh, that is also another component of that confidence factor. And we've talked about this a few times. Pensions, pensions are heavily, heavily invested in the stock market, right? When people start seeing their portfolios drop and their retirement accounts drop and their pensions get cut, um, panic is going to spread real quick. Now, I continue to believe that they're going to keep the stock market propped up. Now, will that be enough to keep the consumer confident and keep the uh, bigger fear from spreading over here to the United States? We'll have to see. But let's take a look at some information that might help us kind of solve this. Right now, tsunami-like virus fears are spreading through South Korea with new cases propping up in Europe. Um, Italy is beginning to isolate cities. The Italian government has said about 150 cases have been confirmed. Authorities have locked down about 12 cities and canceled events across the north, including Venice's carnival. Cases are confirmed coming out of Iran. Uh, cases in South Korea, the UK. 200 people in Israel are quarantined now. All right, we also have Japan. Uh, many people under lockdown. Also, Axios is out there reporting that there's shortages of about 150 essential drugs right now because of all the manufacturing coming out of China. Now, this is one of the dangerous things about having so much consolidation and centralization. When you have one global superpower, and this is China, doing most of the manufacturing, when something bad like this happens, it can begin to spread across, across the globe very quickly. And now we're going to see shortages, and we see grocery store shelves being emptied in some areas uh, because of the fear not yet here in the U.S., but there have been reports here in the U.S. of lower amounts of items in stock, not complete empty shelves, but shelves that are beginning to look like uh, shortages are starting to spring up here. And I'm sure most of you know this by now. If you go into a Target or Walmart, between 50 and 80 percent of that store is going to be stocked from goods from China. Right? This is why countries need to be more self-sufficient. We don't need to have one country that's doing the majority of the manufacturing. Right, Shipping is freezing up in a lot of areas. I'm um, In Austria, they stopped a train coming from Italy because of the fear of infection. Now, many times over the past couple years, I said it's going to get crazier and crazier, not just with the economy, but with these worldwide events unfolding. Um, but even I never thought it would get to this in some parts of the world like we're seeing right now. Um, they have people in hazmat suits going and just spraying everywhere, spraying people in offices um, with disinfectant. All right, also, gold is catching a major bid. 
uh, what I mean when I say ride the bull. If you have gold or if you're in an ETF or a gold miner, um, you're likely seeing some pretty good gains right now. Right, so try to take this um, this uncertainty, this volatility, uh, try to capitalize on it the best you can to try to prepare. Right, I think everyone should have an emergency uh, supply of cash outside of the banking system just in case. And again, I'm not saying this is going to spread to America, but we see what's happening in these other countries right now. Right, also over in China, China faces financial Armageddon with 85% of businesses set to run out of cash in three months. Now we talk quite often on this channel about the danger of being in a large city when there's some sort of panic or financial uh, crisis or food shortages like we may see here in the U.S. But guess who's going to be just fine when this whole thing finally does come down? The elites. And this is a report here also out of Asia. A crazy amount of requests is what they're calling it of private jets. The demand for private jet flights has soared 34% over the past month. Who takes private jets? It's the elites, it's the uh, ultra wealthy, it's the heads of corporations, uh, media moguls, you name it, it's the billionaires. They're going to get out of the mess wherever it happens to be. They're going to likely have a bug out location. We talked about New Zealand, how many of the ultra rich have underground bunkers in New Zealand. Now, we talked a few minutes ago about how Italy has now shut down about 12 cities right now with quarantines. Again, they're canceling events. They've locked down several cities in Italy. And let's go over to a quick map right here. If this can go from China to Italy this quickly and causing them to lock down cities, then there's a good chance it could go even farther into the U.S. And, of course, there are cases here in the U.S., um, there's no reports of any cities being on lockdown right now, even though there are reports of quarantines. Now, a lot of this is going to depend on how well they can keep us contained, how uh, secure they're going to be at the airports and the supports and quarantining these people. Um, well, that's scary. It looks like Google's tracking me. There's a star right here where I'm at in Southern California. Um, not my address. Nope, that's not me. It's pretty close, though. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Let's keep an eye on the stock market today. Let's also keep an eye on gold and silver because when fear starts to spread, when people start exiting the stock market, the money typically flies somewhere and precious metals are a safe haven as far as a lot of people are wanting to get into something less volatile. Okay, I also am a believer that the metals markets are highly manipulated through the futures markets, uh, through paper contracts that they use to hold down the prices. Uh, but we'll have to see if the panic overrides the um, the naked shorting of uh, metals. You know, we'll have to see where this goes. All right, take this time to stock up on a few extra supplies. Go out and buy some uh, some big five gallon water bottles and get some fresh water. Uh, if you have some extra room in the garage, you know, maybe put a few bottles in there. Get some extra canned goods when you go to the store. Just stock up on a few extra canned goods. I'm not saying you know get uh, all freaked out and. You know, pull all your cash out of the bank, but do have an emergency fund. Um, do have some food and water. Um, like we talked about a few episodes ago, if you got a bunch of junk in your garage, um, get rid of it, donate it, and replace it with um, crates or storage bins of canned goods. All right, dried rice is good. I don't want to sound like a prepper channel here, but I think everyone should prepare um, a little bit. If you've ever bought in car insurance, if you've ever uh, put on your seat belt, you're a prepper, right? You're preparing uh, for something bad to happen or maybe even get pulled over and get a ticket for no insurance. Either way, you're preparing not to get a ticket, right? We're all preppers and we just have to be aware of what's ahead of us. Continue to ride the bull, prepare for the bear. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.